Hi, and welcome to chapter five uh, for Math 181. This is the fifth and final chapter for this class. In chapter five, we're gonna be looking at what's called integrals. And specifically in this first video, section 5.1, we're going to be looking at areas and distances. And I should just say this is the first of two videos for this section. So, so far in calculus, uh, we've been looking at what's known as, or so far in this class, we've been looking at what's known as differential calculus, taking the uh, derivatives of them. In chapter five, we get into what's known as integral calculus. And by using integral calculus, we're able to start solving some problems that might have been difficult before. With integral calculus, they become a lot easier to solve. And so if you're a student of mine, or a former student, I guess I should say, you know I always had that saying, which was what? That the essence of math is to make complicated things simple, not simple things complicated. And that's what integral calculus will do, is it'll start simplifying some of these problems for us. So the first thing we'll look at in this video is area problems. So let's say for example, I have a rectangle. If I want to know the area of that rectangle, well, I have a formula, right? Length times width. Or maybe I have some triangle and I want this area. Well, I could do what? I could divide it up into two triangles and figure out area B, figure out A, figure out B, add them together, or if I have the height, I could you know, use the formula for a triangle. Or maybe I have a pentagon. Oops, not so regular, but. And what can I do here? Well, same thing, I could divide this into a bunch of triangles, five different pieces, If I didn't have the formula for a pentagon, I could figure out the area of all these triangles, add them all up, and that would give me the area. But what if I wanted the area under the curve y equals x squared? between 0 and 1. So that means what? That means, well, x squared is what? It's a parabola. So I know I start at 0, I end at 1, 1, and I'm going to have this curve here, right? Well, what I essentially want is this area under here. Sort of looks like a triangle, but it's got that curved edge. So if I use a formula for a triangle, that's not going to help me really. Well, what could I do? I could divide it up maybe into four pieces. So say, so this is zero, this is one. So maybe this is one fourth, one half, three fourths. So I could do what? I could create this rectangle, come from a half, plug that into my function, that rectangle, that rectangle, and eventually one. So if I figured out these four rectangles, added up all the areas, that would give me a pretty good idea of what the area would be. But what do I have here? I have this part is extra, this is extra, this is extra, this is all extra. So even though it's a decent approximation, it's going to be more than what I need, right? So what if instead, so this one here, I, I used the right endpoints, meaning what? 
meaning I went to this section of the interval, went to the right endpoint, went up to where it met the function, and then came over. And that gave me my first rectangle. If I did it with, whoops, so one fourth, one half, three fourths, divided in the same number of sections. So now if I use the left endpoint, go up to where the function is, draw my rectangle there. So on this one, so that was using right endpoints, now if I use the left endpoints, so I basically have what? I have four intervals here. So in this one, the four intervals, I'm going to use the left value of the interval, which in this case is zero, go up to the function, well that's, that gives me nothing, right? It's just that line. If I use from one-fourth to a half, the left endpoint, which is a fourth, go up to the, uh, to the curve, come across, come down. At a half, go up to the curve, come over, come down. And at three-fourths, come up, come over. And that gives me my last one. So that gives me three, technically four, but really just three, uh, in, uh, three rectangles. If I add all those up, will give me another rough estimate of what the area is under the curve. But the problem here is what? Now I'm missing all of this red. So in the first one, I had too much. In the second one, I don't have quite enough. It's somewhere in the middle. So what did we do there? We took the interval, 0 to 1, divided in that case into four intervals, and then took the areas of the rectangle and added them up. And I was off depending on how big my intervals were. What if instead I chose a tiny interval, and a tiny interval, and a tiny interval, tiny, 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 If I did this, what's happening here? Well, the smaller the interval that I get, it basically becomes what? To the point where it's almost a bunch of lines, right? This error that I have becomes so small that when I add them up, it gives me essentially the area that I need. And that's what integral calculus, that's what uh, taking the areas under these curves, dividing them into essentially an infinite number of intervals so that they become so small that the error we get is, no, is, is almost nothing. So the definition is that the area of the region S that lies under the graph of a continuous function f is the limit of the sum of the areas approximating rectangles, areas of approximating rectangles written as follows. So the area is equal to the limit of n number of rectangles as n goes to infinity. Meaning the more rectangles we can put underneath this curve, the better the estimation or the approximation of our area is going to be. 
this is essentially this Rn. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of f of x1 times delta x plus f of x2 times delta x plus so on and so forth until we get to x of n delta x. You might also see this in sigma notation. Sigma meaning sum. Um, it's that sort of like crooked E. So the sum as i goes from 1 to n of f of xi delta x, which again means the same thing as what we had up there. So essentially what this is saying is we're going to divide this thing up into n intervals, take the function at each point, whatever that function value is, times it by delta x, which is the width of that rectangle. So in the example I raised there with the parabola, this delta x would have been one quarter. So we would have taken f of one quarter times a quarter. Then f of one half times a quarter. f of three quarters times a quarter. f of one times a quarter. And you would just repeat that. And again, the more ends, the more rectangles you can get, the better your approximation of that area is going to be. So that's kind of an introduction to areas uh, and the idea of what integral calculus is going to do for us. Come on back, we'll look at distances and that'll wrap up uh, section 5.1.